We're recording. I can see that. It tells me on my screen. Oh my lord, this is my first Zoom interview. Wow, and me. I've never used it before. It's all the rage I hear. Wow. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you have a fireplace behind you and you have your own whiskey now. You made your own whiskey years ago and it's now at your house. That's right. Yes. I should have got a prop to show you, but yeah. Go um, for it. Go for it. You want me to go grab it? After yeah. I do the earphone out and back on thing. <laughs> All right. While she's doing that, I will tell you who this person is. Justine, really good friend of mine, fantastic person, fantastic filmmaker. The Aleutian Islands, Alaska, renowned for bad weather. This rugged volcanic archipelago stretches like a broken bridge from Russia to Alaska along the Pacific Ring of Fire. The archipelago is rarely visited due to its remoteness and dangerous seas, yet we're attempting to be the first people to kayak 1,500 miles along the desolate, wild coastline. Award-winning filmmaker. Not just a filmmaker, a award- Whoa! He is, is where you go with the, the first thing, you know? <laughs> so, I don't know how well you can see it. And to me, it looks the wrong way around. Does it look the wrong way around to you? No, no, it's, it's fine here, yeah. Okay. That's cool! So yeah. you made your own whiskey, 14 year old. So that, you made that 14 years ago. Well, I mean, to say I made it is kind of, you know, giving me a bit too much credit, but I purchased it. <laughs> um, I was kayaking around Jura, and uh, I, we stopped at Isla for, to go to the pub, basically, for the night. And the people on Isla said, you can't just leave tomorrow. It's amazing here. You have to go, you have to look around. And they arranged for us to do a tour of Brook Laddie. And uh, I learned at that point that you could buy a barrel of whiskey as it was poured. And at the time I couldn't afford a house. So I thought, what a perfect investment. I can afford a barrel of whiskey. And uh, so you can sell it back to them at any point or you can just bottle it yourself, which is what I did. So uh, yeah, I didn't get very many bottles. It might sound like a lot, but I think I only got 275. <laughs> which is not much from a sherry hogshead, for a hogshead, which is 250 liters, they're 750 milliliters. But the, um, the angels share, basically, some of it evaporates every year, and the angels liked my whiskey, and uh, they took more of it than average. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. That is, that, that's a great idea. Well, cheers, cheers. I know it's earlier for you than me, but... Are you, is that actually whiskey? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, could, it could be tea, but it's a funny glass to drink tea in. I, I just had my, my afternoon tea. Uh. Right, okay, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm not, it, it's like 10, 11 in the morning for me, so I won't be uh, drinking whiskey. I'm a good girl. I usually wait till four or five, but we're in a pandemic, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, I was just introducing you. Uh, so many people know you, I don't even know you, you need to be introduced, but uh, first of all, just laugh for a second. Oh, I can't laugh like on spec. I mean, I kind of can, but it'll sound really fake. You want me to do it? Well, no, I'll get you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? That's how you became Cackle TV, right? Exactly, yeah. And Justine, why is your uh, website called Cackle TV? <laughs> First time I heard that, I was like, you're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. But I don't remember when it, when it happened, like if I've always laughed like this or if it just developed at some point. Um, but yeah, like my nickname at university from my hockey playing friends was a uh, cackle. And uh, so I, when I set up my own business, I was trying to think of all these kind of evocative words that brought up um, thoughts of the wilderness and nature and kayaking and whatever. And, but the only thing that really stuck in my head was cackle. And it was weird. I'm like, I can't call an adventure filmmaking company Cackle TV, but I just kept coming back to it. And, Basically, it's, it's my company, it's, I do most things, the filming, the editing, the marketing, the making the tea. And so I figured, well, it's about me, so why not have a name, which basically is one of my uh, distinctive characteristics. <laughs> I haven't noticed, no. I, I, the first time I actually saw you at a show, uh, I knew of you, but I'd never met you before, and then I could, I could hear you. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell now why uh, Justine's uh, website is called Cackle TV. 
has been said before that uh, people can never lose me. <laughs> they know where I am. Oh, there she is. Someone said something funny. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious, actually. And even when we're on the Spay River together, uh, we, we, you never got lost. We just listened for you, so. <laughs> well, exactly. It can be <laughs> handy if I, my navigation fails or the fog comes down. That's right. That's fantastic. <laughs> so you're award-winning filmmaker, but also you're, you're, oh, you're a highly acclaimed This is the Sea series. People know you from that, right? So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, th that's done pretty well over the years and a lot of people are aware of it. Not so much these days, because um, I haven't made one for a while, a new film, but um, yeah, certainly in my heyday, uh, yeah, lots of people were buying them and talking about them and reviewing them and yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I think these days um, there's not nearly as much kind of marketing. I don't really market them myself much. I don't pay to advertise them or anything. So now um, it's more word of mouth that new people hear about it. And through social media, I still have a, a pretty strong following on social media. And then I share videos and other people share them. You know how it works, things kind of spread. Um, but yeah, I think far less people know about it these days, sort of newer people coming into the sport. Well, things have changed a lot for you too since then too, right? I mean, first of all, you're living in Canada. Yes, what that's true. That? <laughs> well, it, I met a guy. <laughs> wow, that's, that's the, tin, the skin is tougher than expected. <laughs> uh, I know. I ca came and kayaked around Vancouver Island, and uh, I met DF while I was doing that and then I came back to see him again and then I came back to see him again and then I kind of never left well I mean I leave but now I live here <laughs> That's better. and you you guys guide together too right now yes so he has a company called skills um, which does a lot of guide training and uh, Pavel Canada instruction courses and guided trips and so I do some of everything but the thing that I sort of do most of and like the most is guiding trips for more intermediate to advanced paddlers in really stunning parts of the, the world uh, where I really want to go so it's nice to uh, you know to take people there and have that be my job. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> and with perfect weather, no wind and a lot of sun that we couldn't ask for more than that. Well, what a contrast. Now we're in the War, war Woman Islands. Um, just totally cut the swell, swell out. Really calm and beautiful. Just It feels like a different day. For example, we did a 14-day trip last year around the Brooks Peninsula on Vancouver Island, which is my favourite part of Vancouver Island. And it's one of the harder places to sort of get around, one of the cruxes. And so, as far as I know, no one else has run a guided trip around it. And we're like, well, why not? Let's do it uh, with strong people and a decent amount of time. And it was a, a fantastic trip. And then we do a 19-day trip up in the Great Bear Rainforest on the central coast. And then most years, we go to Antarctica and take people on a month-long trip uh, on a yacht-based expedition there, which is an amazing way to see Antarctica. I don't deserve this. <laughs> I don't know what I did to deserve this. <laughs> this is amazing. Again, it's for decent paddlers. We're in single kayaks. We paddle most days. Uh, go exploring by foot um, when we're not, um, or, or sailing. Yeah. So I, that's what I really like to to do. To sort of share my love of the outdoors with people. Um, go to these amazing places. a beautiful paddle, we've got back on a warm yacht, we've got freshly made tart and we've got hot chocolate with whiskey in it! <laughs> well I was, I was, on the list I was going to ask you some of your fantastic past adventures but you taught me something a long time ago when we were on the Spay River and so I'm not going to ask that question because it was your birthday. 
were on the spay. And I went and asked you, uh, what was your favorite moment? You know, I think you're turning 40 at the time, or 30, you're turning. <laughs> so now you're a year older. Um, what is uh, one of your favorite memories in your life? Um, that's kind of weird. Um, that's what you're supposed to do for your birthday. What, think about the past? Oh, okay. Think about the future. So you taught me so much that, that day. And so <laughs> what are the trips you're thinking of now? What are you going to do uh, in the next year or two? Well, uh, this year um, we were planning to uh, have an adventure for a few months, uh, six weeks or so. And initially we were thinking we'd go to Greenland and then with the whole COVID-19 thing going on, we're like, well, it might not be such a good idea to travel all that way. And um, plus it was going to be pretty expensive to get us and kayaks there from Canada. So now we were looking at maybe paddling around Haida Gwaii this, this summer. And we'll see whether we're able to do that or not. I've, I've done it before but I'm happily do it again. It was a long time ago. And uh, with, with my friend Shauna and Leon, this one would be with JF. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, there's lots of things I'd like to do. I'd like to, quite like to paddle around Newfoundland, actually. Um, maybe Iceland. Um, you know, in the past, I've done a lot of big trips around islands. That's been kind of a, my addiction, I suppose. In July 2007, Shauna Franklin and Leon Somme deserted their sea kayaking business, Body Boat Blade, and joined me, Justine Kagenven, on a circumnavigation of Haida Gwaii, the beautiful Queen Charlotte Islands. And more recently, I guess I haven't done as many kind of long, challenging trips like that. I mean, last year I went did a, a month-long trip in the central coast region of Canada, which was beautiful and nice just to be able to take a ferry there and then paddle kind of thing. And the year before I went up to the, the Canadian Arctic for five weeks, I think it was. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, to me, those are quite short trips traditionally, you know. <laughs> I like going away for, you know, two months, maybe, yeah, three months even. Um, but uh, I don't have any big plans of that because I'm guiding more now in the summers. Um, I don't have that big chunk of time at the moment available. Um, and I'd also be honest, like to do some biking adventures and a pack raft adventure. You know, like I think uh, it's fun to try different things. And I've been doing lots of kind of smaller adventures now I'm in Canada. So I've been learning to surf on a board. I've been going out surf kayaking quite a bit, um, doing some ski touring uh, close to me. Yeah, it's nice to sort of just um, yeah, change up a little bit what you're doing. Still getting out there, but a lot of it is for shorter kind of adventures. Yeah, shorter chew is not short for most people. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. It's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> what about film projects? Uh, are you still filming and you're still creating something? Um, I haven't done much filming. I filmed little bits here and there. So I filmed like when I go to Antarctica, we went to South Georgia, Subantarctic Island in October, which an amazing place, amazing wildlife, biggest concentration of wildlife in the world. I think there's five million fur seals, half a million elephant seals there. So I filmed there, but in a different sort of way. Like if you're filming to make a film, then it's really hard work. You have to film a lot. You have to think about getting enough shots to make a sequence. You have to get interviews with people to sort of get the personal interest. And I just don't have the same motivation to do that for all the time anymore because well one I was guiding on that trip so it's hard to do that and to do a good job as a guide um, and secondly people just don't buy films like they used to um, and so for me I like filmmaking but I don't like it enough to make a loss at it <laughs> um, I'm not going to make films just for you know I, I, I'd rather go on an adventure than sit at my desk and edit if I'm not going to make money out of it if that makes sense so um, I'm an adventurer before I'm a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker too, but that's not my sort of driving force to, to my being, if you like. That is your background though too. You were a journalist for years and years? Yeah, I was a journalist for a couple of years. Yeah, um, a TV journalist. I was a news reporter. And then, and that was amazing for teaching me how to tell a story. It really was. I remember when I first went in, it took me two days to write a one minute script. And by the end of my two years as a news reporter, I could do two two minute scripts in a day. And uh, that includes going out and recording a couple of interviews, maybe three interviews in total, doing a couple of pieces of cameras, writing the scripts, coming back, sitting with an editor, getting it done. So that was amazing training. Um, and then I worked as a multi-skilled filmmaker. I got taught to film and to edit professionally. And 
and then I sort of left and started doing my own thing. So yeah, I had a short but intense kind of training on the job period. And uh, yeah, that was great. But and now actually that leads into what I am working on, which is I'm working on a film about how to make an adventure film. So I'm doing like a little instructional video, which will give people tips on uh, how that they can make a good film. Because what I figure is that a lot of people, not many people are buying films anymore, but everybody's a camera. Everyone's a filmmaker, right? Everyone's got a camera and everyone wants to put it together. And some people do an amazing job with not very much training or equipment, but some people do a terrible job. <laughs> and uh, so I just want to, um, you know, offer some help and advice for those people. And it's going to be aimed at people without fancy equipment. So it's like... Uh, you know, because I think that's my strength, really. As time has gone on, as you know, a lot of filmmakers in the adventure sphere have made some amazing films with fancy equipment. I mean, drones are very affordable these days. Um, you know, the production values in adventure films have gone really, really high. And I've sort of gone the other way. Not really gone the other way, but I just, I haven't followed that trend. I, I mean, I have a drone, but I... I still, um, my films, I think the strength is the story and the kind of in your faceness of it. It's like I film my adventures when I'm there and I can tell a story well and uh, carry people along with that. Well, I'm all snuggled in my tent for the night. Feeling very happy. Beautiful view out the tent. And I'm gonna enjoy night sleeping on the ice. And so the, the, the how-to film that I'll do will be kind of about, it's not about how to get the fanciest shot you can, although there will be tips on how to make the best of your equipment and to do good shots. But we're not gonna be talking about dollies and uh, you know, whatever fancy equipment it's just going to be some solid things that anybody can do to make a good film that's fantastic and and i, I i've experienced you doing that <laughs> i remember on the spay river just the, the quick uh anecdote is uh you did not want to film on that trip and you said good luck with you kevin and it wasn't until when the the whiskey uh company came into our camp that night where i got a little tipsy where you just said yeah i'll be filming give me give me your camera <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so smooth. <laughs> Should we tell him that's not the one he's drinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. That is one good thing is that when you really don't want to film is when you really should film. <laughs> and normally that's more in a kind of stressful or dangerous situation or something. But uh, also when someone's being extremely funny and is not quite capable of operating the camera themselves anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you think about that yeah you get those moments in all the films you've done you've, you've caught those moments uh i mean you do a lot of kayaking you're the, the kayaker uh right everybody knows mm -hmm. you as the kayaking film person but actually i know you as the canoeist because when i first paddled with you it was actually when you're doing that film uh, this is canoeing i want to be that 80 year old guy sitting on the porch and saying i remember when as opposed to i wish i did Yes. Yeah, that's a long time ago. So um, yeah, it, it, so it sounds like you just take whatever vehicle that will get you into the, uh, the wilderness. Is that, your, is that your... Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I am. I mean, Sika, I love being outdoors. I love uh, like biking, skiing, kayaking, canoeing, hiking, whatever. But um, sea kayaking is what I'm best at and is probably, probably what I love the most. Um, but I just like... Yeah, you know, like you said, I like being out there, and and I made I think when I made this as canoeing, I'd made four sea kayaking DVDs, and I just fancy the change. And I always joke like when I'm sea kayaking, I love going around the outside of things, and you get like a great view of, of that. But with canoeing, I felt you could go right through the middle of things, through the heart of things, and I really liked that idea. You know, a great way to see a country, to explore a country, is just to follow that river system that cuts through. And I think the main reason that I actually wanted to do the This Is Canoeing video was because I wanted to go on a remote canoeing trip. And so I got in touch with Blackfeather, 
and uh, and I, I got advice from a few people who said the mountain river was the guide's kind of favorite mountain, not as famous as the Nahani, but like a good solid uh, river in a beautiful area without quite as much height. The mountain river in Canada's Northwest Territories. 370 kilometers wild white water cuts through one of the world's last remaining wildernesses. Visited by fewer than 150 canoeists every year. And so I spoke to Black Feather and they gave me a really good deal on a trip in, in, in exchange for me filming it. And I did that for however long it was. And uh, it was beautiful. It was really amazing. I loved it. And then I figured, well, let's try and cover all different aspects of canoeing, different interesting characters and different disciplines. It's definitely fun. And so, yeah, I filmed uh, everything from whitewater canoeing down the Moose River to canoe slalom to family trips and to some kind of weirdo guy called Kevin Callum that, uh, <laughs> that someone told me was pretty cool and I should uh, meet up with and do a bit of filming with. You know it's cold when you gotta break the water. <laughs> I think it was Becky Mason actually that told me that I should film with you. When I'm out canoeing like this, I love to soak up all my memories and that's how I paint. I did some filming with, with Becky around her place but yeah Becky was it was it was hard to convince some people to let me come and film with them. It, well, Becky was probably the hardest because she didn't know me and uh, she wanted to sort of she had to vet me so I had to send her some some uh, some copies of films I'd done and talk to her and convince her that I wasn't a psycho and things like that. So yeah, she was the hardest person to uh, persu persuade to let me film with her. And then, and then once she was on board, she was great. And then she was like, oh, you should film my friend Kevin Callum. He's pretty cool. And so I gave you a call and, uh, and you, I think I came to your house. I can't remember how I got there. And then we, I remember you took me to Tim Hortons, that you know, traditional Canadian experience. And then, yeah, we went and... Uh, I can't remember why we saw Scott at that point, but uh, yeah, I, I was. I, was, I, oh, I yeah. to do the shuttle for you guys. I think the 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 first Justine moment for me was though when we stopped to look at the Bering Canyon. Uh, some people had recognized you and went nuts. <laughs> they couldn't believe they met you. Oh, that's Justine! Oh my! Oh my! And I went, oh, like she must be well known. That was. Quite <laughs> I remember that she had forgotten, but that was quite funny because we were in your country in canoeing country. <laughs> <laughs> Park and they recognize someone from Wales. <laughs> I know, but oh, that's right. I think I was filming with you, and then afterwards, you dropped me at Scott's because after that, I went to do the Petawawa River with him. I think that's yeah, how it worked. Yeah. yeah, that was a cool trip, too. I remember dropping you off, and I, I everything was freezing. So, I don't think I've ever grabbed onto a paddle that was frozen before. Yeah, it was, and I think I must have been tougher then because I look back at the tent that I had and the sleeping bag that I had, and I was warm enough, and I would not take that sleeping bag now in minus. <laughs> seven or whatever it was <laughs> oh my lord sorry this this is all to do with filming at home my phone's going just oh my goodness everybody ignore it i'll put something in my film about make sure you turn your phone off you know when you're yeah. filming and you know what it's my mother probably <laughs> where are you what's going on <laughs> uh you met the queen i did what i didn't know that <laughs> and you knew oh well a few years ago she had a she had a, a reception for adventurers uh, to mem commemorate, I um, can't even remember what, something to do with a Scott and Antarctica, a hundred years since he had gone there, I think. And uh, so, yeah, there were like 300 odd people invited to Buckingham Palace for, a, uh, for some drinks and canapes. And uh, I was one of them. So yeah, it was pretty exciting. I, did, I don't normally go to London, but I thought I should probably make, a, make an exception, you know? <laughs> that, that was, that's really cool. They, they, uh, of all the awards you won, because you have won a lot, Fan, film festival, for example, uh, what was the one that really hit, hit you um, in a good way? Like, you were really proud of it. Well, I should say, I, I, well, a film I made won Best Adventure Film at Banff quite a long time ago. It was a caving film, and I was actually working for a different company. Um, and then uh, my, some of my films have been finalists at Banff, um, my kayaking films. Um, I guess probably the best win was the best film at Graz Mountain Film Festival in Austria, which is one of the 
one of the sort of reputable outdoor film festivals and yeah, won the, the main prize for Kayaking the Aleutians there, which was really exciting. And it was a shame I couldn't go. I was away uh, um, with my, my family in the Cayman Islands at the time. And uh, um, so they were trying to persuade me to go and, and I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't. And then they went, well, you might have won something. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, I can't. And then eventually like, okay, you have won something. Can you come now? I'm like, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it was a real shame. So I did like a little video link to, uh, to say thank. And I thought, great, well, I could have won the, I probably won if, when they told me I won something, but okay, it's gonna be the best adventure film. And then when I like, I looked it up on their website the next day, who won the best adventure film? And it wasn't me. And I was like, what? They said I won. And then I saw, shit, I won the, the best film, <laughs> the grand prize. So that was very exciting. And it's a real shame I couldn't be there. Well, that's fantastic. Um, now, do you still wear that ugly sweater when you do a uh, tour? Which ugly sweater? Look at this. <laughs> World traveling. <laughs> this is it's crazy. But she can't afford a new sweater. <laughs> Which you probably have a lot more than just one, but that yeah. one, oh, you wore it like when I saw you in Toronto, Ottawa, like everywhere. Oh, was it like brown with like bits of things like hanging off it? It was different colors, but yeah, things were hanging off it. Yeah. Yeah, I still wear that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I wore it quite recently, but it's like a fleece with like these kind of like bits of fleece stuck on it. And like it looks like lots of spaghetti or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, but unfortunately, like now they're hanging off the arm, so I often get it caught on door handles. <laughs> so it pulls off a bit more every time. So, so now it's, yeah. So yeah, I like that. Let, me, let me get this straight. The, the only times I really remember you is when I had to shuttle you uh, to do another film that I wasn't in. Uh, the sweater that you actually wear at all the shows is ugly as hell. Um, <laughs> you had to film me because I was inebriated. And what's the other one? <laughs> <laughs> I think I pulled your others at Kinukopia once. Do what? <laughs> Did you do? Get a reaction. I Facebook reminded me of a photo not that long ago. You were in a cow suit. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you pulled your others for the photo. I know, <laughs> not that's what it first sounded like. Yeah, uh, I think we were freaking people out there. But yeah, I wore a cow, cow outfit because I played the cowbell with Jerry, uh, the singer-songwriter, right? And then I was getting dressed and then you pulled my other. It was utterly ridiculous. Absolutely. Oh, man. They, so do you like living in Canada? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's great to have so much wilderness on our doorstep. And I mean, even right now when everyone's kind of staying at home and not going out much. Um, I mean, yesterday we went for a hike for two, three hours and we didn't get within 200 meters of someone else, never mind two meters, you know? So it's very nice for that. There's a lot like now we can get out and uh, not put ourselves or anyone else in any danger. And I, I, I need that. I would go mad if I was cooped up inside for too, too long. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's good. That's good, that's good. Yeah, all right. Um... Uh, oh, 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 I already asked you all these questions. I'm going to ask you one just out of the, the thing. That, so people um, right now are probably going to want to get in the wilderness more than ever after this is all over. What do you get out of traveling all through the wilds for so many years? I mean, really, you, you, you basically say that it's the adventure, time in the woods is far more important than the film. Why is that for you? I don't know. I think that um, I just feel at peace when I'm out there. I think at home, it's quite easy to get stressed by lots of things, lots of pressures on you, got to do this, got to do that, didn't do that well, got to pay this, got to whatever. And uh, I find that getting out there is the only way I can really just get away from all of that and put it behind me. And yeah, you, you can kind of worry that you're, you're out of contact and there might be things happening that you don't even know about, but there's just quite a piece in just being out there and just having to worry about your day-to-day -day needs. Um, I think there's a, a, a lot of peace in that for me on the journey. And I do miss journeys when I don't go on them, but equally just going out, like going out surfing or whatever, it's just so nice just to be out. And the physical exercise is, is a good part of it for me. I always feel good after I've done some exercise. Um, and just, yeah, just breathing in the air and being in wild places. 
And I think also meeting people, like a lot of the journeys I've done, I've met some really interesting people. Um, you, I go to places where there aren't many people, so the people that do live there are usually pretty cool. So like in Russia, for example, kayaking along the coast of Kamchatka, we came to this lighthouse, which was run by two couples, and uh, they hadn't seen anyone else for eight months. Kamchatka, a remote peninsula in Far East Russia, Two women are attempting to kayak 650 kilometers up the exposed east coast where there are no roads. They'll have to fend off Pacific surf, brown bears and the Russian military. And we were able to deliver them a couple of letters and uh, it was just so cool to see the guy like spent five minutes arranging his cushions, getting comfortable so we could read these letters and this was June and one of them was a Christmas card. And one of them was a letter from his son. So, you know, that was really special to be able to deliver that to these people. And I, I don't know, there was a lady in Iceland where, where I landed one time, I was paddling by myself and I landed, I was a bit bedraggled and uh, she, um, uh, she didn't speak English very well, but she could see I was a bit bedraggled. She invited me in, she put my socks and pogies on the radiator to dry. She made me tea and coffee to make sure I had what I wanted and there was all this food and then, she got up and she went on the phone and she came out, she handed me the phone, a bit confused, went, hello. <laughs> and this voice said, my mother would like to know if there is anything that you need. <laughs> I just thought that was amazing. You know, she just uh, phoned up her son to see, uh, you know, what, what uh, someone that could un to talk to me so I could explain what I needed. So. I don't know. When you filmed, uh, I forget her name, but that, that woman that went around the world uh, and you, you filmed her when you kayak together, you also had a, a, an issue. I think she was naked and found a, a bear beside her while she was in the creek. I was having a naked uh, shower in this river and the bear came. <laughs> go away! Ah! Ah! Go away! Ah! I started shouting at him and retreating quite quickly. I didn't do it calmly. He carried on coming and uh, had them sniff on my clothes and shampoo. Go away, bear! Go away, bear! Go away! Ran when I started throwing pebbles at him. Rocks, not pebbles, rocks. Oh! Oh! Is this really stupid to be camped next to a river? Well, it's not a salmon river. That's true. The water sourcing, isn't it? And there are bears, it's Alaska. Yeah. Oh, golly, golly. <laughs> Sarah is right now butt naked. Go away! Well, that was in the Aleutians. Sarah, Sarah Eaton traveled around the world under her human power. And uh, I did, I joined her on the kayaking sections of that. And we kayaked 250, sorry, 2,500 kilometers from Adak to Homer in Alaska on the Aleutian Island chain. And at one point we landed by this stream and uh, we knew that it was kind of, there were grizzly bears around and we knew it was getting close to uh, the salmon spawning. Um, but we landed and we looked around, we didn't see any fish, we didn't see any bears. So we're like, okay, we're good. And then Sarah decided to have a wash in the stream. And so I gave her some space. She's there washing all naked. And, and then suddenly I hear this, Jesse, there's a bear. <laughs> And last time she had said that the bear was like 200 meters away, so it wasn't really any threat. So this time I thought, I just imagined the same thing. So instead of grabbing the flares or anything like that, I grabbed my camera. I rushed up to the top of the bank and there was the bear like 40 meters away and coming right towards us. <laughs> and uh, by this time Sarah had run behind me, run behind me. <laughs> so I was the closest thing to the bear and all I had was my camera. I'm filming and I'm, but I'm also thinking, oh my God, that thing is coming right towards me. What do I do? And then Sarah starts shouting at him and throwing rocks in the stream and uh, I start swearing and uh, luckily the bear runs away. <laughs> And I look back at the footage and it looks like it's coming at me with, with purpose, but actually it's going for Sarah's clothes. You can see in the film that she had left by the stream to, and, but it, even it didn't eat those. I mean, they were so grim that uh, <laughs> even the bear left, uh, left them. So. That's bizarre. Yeah. Hey, well, that was, um, the, uh, so if people are right now li listening and they're like, uh, where do I get these films? Uh, where would they, what, what, what would be the best place? So um, my website is cackletv.com. You can not going to remember that now. I hope so. <laughs> and then on there you can buy DVDs and you can buy downloads of all of the films. And if you just go up to the top of the screen, you can say buy DVDs or buy downloads. 
And actually right now with COVID-19, I have an offer on that um, people can download for free one of my films. Uh, this is a C3, which is basically a collection of films. And if they use the, the, the code stay at home, then that film is totally free at the moment. Um, so and people can enjoy that. And then if they want to buy more films right now, there's also a 50% off code, which I can't remember. <laughs> should probably look that up. <laughs> I'll look that up. That's kind of, you know, something I should know. And, that, uh, that, and that's, they can find This Is Canoeing on there as well? Absolutely, yes. This Is Canoeing is on there. And so all of the This Is, um, uh, okay, Cabin Fever is the code for 50% off any of the other films. That's um, great. Yeah. <laughs> I, think we, I think we could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Stay at Home gets you. This is a C3 for free. And also, if people check out my Facebook page, um, I have various social media. That's the one I tend to use the most. Then all that information's on there. If you go to the Cackle TV Facebook page, then there's lots of videos on there that you can see. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, which is you can find easily on YouTube. I think that's under my name, Justine Kagenben. Um, but it, you'll be able to find them uh, easily. And they've got previews of a lot of the films on, on it. So there's lots of ways you can watch stuff for free. And then if you want to buy more, then, uh, yeah, to download all the DVDs you can get. Um, but, yeah, Facebook is just Cackle TV, I think. Facebook slash Cackle TV, you should find it. Or search for it. Or I'm friends with Kevin. You can find me that way. <laughs> <laughs> we pretend, you know, just on Facebook. <laughs> We uh, we had a great time in the spay with uh, with with Paul and Ray, and I remember the one moment uh, you were the kayaker. I mean, you were in, in canoes, and at the very first part of it, you and I were both apprehensive because you know Ray was saying, "Oh, you know this river," and Paul was, "Oh, this river," and we're getting a little apprehensive. And I had run whitewater, but not Scotland, and you had kayak, and we ended up doing fine. But remember that moment where your world came into play, where we were paddling down the river into the ocean, and we thought, "Hey, well." Jesse would be great because like, that's what she does. She kayaks in the ocean. And mm -hmm. we saw the ocean. She said, I'm not going in that. <laughs> Blimey, well, we are about half a kilometer away from the sea. We've just seen a seal and uh, lots of seagulls. And uh, this wind is a pain in the bum. Uh, it's really, 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 really hard work. Oh my God, I've just seen the surf. <gasps> Wow, we are not going out to sea today. Bloody hell. Even I don't want to go to sea today. That's crazy. Oh my God, that's horrendous. That was a crazy last day, wasn't it? Was it? it was really strong headwinds, wasn't it? Like crazy yeah. winds. And uh, I struggled a bit that day to control the canoe because like, it was so windy paddling into it and you know so much windage they just turn I think I was like lying on the canoe pretty much once to paddle to try to reduce the windage but uh yeah and then we got to the sea and we didn't actually paddle into the sea because it looked pretty crazy yeah we yeah. couldn't do that I know mommy hell bollocks and crackers you were, I, I was having worse time than you were I, uh, you were ahead of me and then there was a moment where we caught up and we we're just about to finish and then um I was trying to film and then a seal popped up and you said oh Kevin Film the seal, and I went, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true filmmaker right there beside me. Is a true filmmaker. She wanted to film the seal just before we died. <laughs> well, if I was a true filmmaker, I guess I had to film the seal. <laughs> it was easy for me just to tell, to tell you what to do. I think I filmed a few bits on the stage, and I? I don't remember, but yeah, yeah. I do remember that I didn't want to make a film of it. Cause it yeah. Was no, I got a lot of uh, uh, tidbits of uh, film from you uh, around the campfire. So I was being super helpful this morning because this is how Paul lit the fire last night with these beautiful little lichen. So I've been around and diligently collect all this little lichen and he's just totally usurped me. And he's like lit a fire just by blowing on old bits of wood. I mean, come on, that's so inconsiderate. I was just trying to play and have a bit of fun. And look at him, he's just blown a fire from nothing. <laughs> it was wickedly wild on that river, I'm telling you. Uh, it was a good trip. We should do it again. It's a wee bit windy out here in Scotland on the sea. <laughs> yeah, it was a really fun trip. If I miss anything? 
I don't think so. Maybe I should just explain a bit more for a lot of people won't know that, you know, the, this is the C series is they're all, there's five of them and it's like a magazine format. So each DVD or collection of films, because you can buy them as a download, has about between eight and 12 different films on it. So each one has at least one kind of long expedition film and then some shorter films features on people or on a place. Um, and the same with This Is Canoeing. So I, I forget it's maybe eight films on This Is Canoeing. Yeah. And uh, they're all they're all a different aspect of canoeing. And uh, yeah, they're great value and people like them. They've had a lot of good reviews. And uh, yeah, I hope that some more people will check them out and enjoy them. It's a living in a Western lifestyle Where people run around us dressed I love that time I've known you for a while and you're the real deal. Uh, you do what you love, you're really good at what you do, and you entertain people, educate people. And you, if you haven't seen her films or her work, check it out, especially now because we have a lot of time on our hands. And if you have seen her work, it's a really good time to actually re-look at it. So mm -hmm. yeah, fantastic. All right, well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> all right, all right nice well, to see uh, you, Kevin. Nice to see you again. It was great seeing you again. Yeah, okay, I'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, bye. Come on, you're gonna. <laughs> 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 We're not in time. <laughs> Get it in time, people. <laughs> Ray, what do you think of journeying with these people? I'm glad I'm retiring soon. I really <laughs> can't. <laughs>